We can all agree it's nice not to have those fights about masks anymore. And at this point, I would say something like reasonable people, though, can agree whether or not masks work or whether or not mask mandates worked. Except we can't say that anymore. Mask mandates, it turns out, were an utter failure. It's not me saying it, but the New York Times. The mask mandates did nothing. Will any lessons be learned? Brett Stevens cites a comprehensive British review of 78 randomized studies with more than 600,000 participants. Forget what you think of masks. Will any lessons be learned is the important question here. Dr. Amos Adalj is here, senior scholar at Johns Hopkins Center for Health Security. Doc, it's good to see you. I guess this is the question. If, if science can change, but when people question science, they were called heretics and banned from Twitter and everything else, how do, how do scientists regain the trust that we need for the next pandemic? I think it's going to be really important for scientists, for physicians to articulate what they know, what they don't know, what the questions are that they're trying to answer, where the uncertainty is, and be okay with uncertainty, because that's what's going to happen with the next emerging infectious disease outbreak. Not all the answers are going to be kind of telegraphed. It's going to take time and it's going to take investigation and things may change as we go through the through whatever outbreak we're talking about. Yeah, one of the great parts about talking to you, and now it's been three years, since I first interviewed you when, when the pandemic began, you've always been willing to say, hey, we don't know this, which almost no television doctor or a doctor on television talking about the pandemic was willing to say and discuss. You're in this world of public health. Is there any understanding or reconciliation with how little trust the American people have? And I think about this poll that we have. 29% of U.S. adults say they have a great deal. 29% of confidence in medical scientists. That's it. Less than a third of Americans trust scientists to act in the best interest of the public. Yeah, what we've seen is that this during this pandemic, public health got sucked into identity politics and anything that goes near politics puts people into their tribes. And I think that individuals in my field of public health also pick tribes and that just kind of percolated down to the average American. And that's why this trust has kind of been something that's been breached. And I think it's going to be something that comes back and really haunts us because the next time there is an infectious disease emergency, when people need to get good information from public health professionals, it's going to be very difficult to get over that that wall yeah. that wall that's now there. And I think this is going to be something that people write about for decades and decades. I, to that point, is there any kind of reckoning? Is there a group of people who are saying, look, we need to come out and issue a mea culpa. We need to say, I'm sorry. I'm thinking about Dr. Fauci, who still says, I'm science. I'm thinking about Rochelle Lewins Walensky refuses to admit mistakes and offer that mea culpa. I think that there have been lots of after action reports where people have talked about what could have been done better, where there could have been nuance, where there could have been less one size fits all. I don't necessarily think you're going to see the government come back on that other than seeing it in you know, GAO reports or congressional investigations. And, and maybe that's something that gets incorporated into the guidance for public health communication for the next uh, the next infectious disease emergency. And indeed, the CDC is doing a lot of reorganization and a lot of rethinking about how they speak. But remember, from the very start, this COVID-19 got kind of sucked into the White House. This wasn't something that was run through the ordinary public health channels. We had White House coordinators. We had the vice president running a task force. All of that made it political from the very, very beginning back in the Trump administration. And I think it's carried on into the second administration. But that's what needs to stop. We've got to kind of shear public health away from politics. And you've got to keep politicians out of this because that makes it very hard for someone in the field to be able to navigate if you're really worrying all, not about the science and how to communicate the most accurate information to the public, but you're worrying about what the White House thinks or what or what the president thinks or what this politician thinks or if you're going to get hauled before Congress. That's not the way you want to run a public health emergency. Now, or if you Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.